Hi everybody, my name's Antoinette, this is Good Ale Games, and welcome to August Monthly Roundup video. The one where I'm going to tell you about some of the things I've been doing with my board game collection. So, is September officially the start of autumn? I, I think it is, right? I think we're like officially over summer now. And normally I'm kind of an autumn winter person, but I think I'm gonna miss this summer. It's been kind of a, a nice one. We had some nice weather, I got to go do nice things. Um, so yeah, um, season's changing. I guess, you know, we're going into board game season, right? Because you can't go out as much maybe, the weather's a problem. It's definitely a good time of year to gather your friends to your house, get all cozy and play some great games. Um, and have I been playing any great games this month? Well, a little, I suppose, might be might be the best answer. Um, and so what this video is going to do is tell you about the games I bought this month, some things I've been playing this month, and then a bit of general chit chat about me and the channel and, you know, whatever comes to mind right at the end. Um, and you can skip through everything. I put timestamps in the video so you don't have to listen to things you don't want to. But of course, I would love for you to stay around and and tune in and give me your thoughts at the end of the video. Um, I do love your comments. Thank you for taking the time to tell me what you've been playing or the games you're interested in. I always find it really fascinating. Um, so yeah, you're more than welcome to kind of put your thoughts and comments in the comment section. Yes, there we go. Okay, comments in the comment section um, and whatnot. So I guess I'm gonna jump right in with the games I've bought. And this has been a very slim month, but I kind of expected it to be on the way soon because, you know, there's <laughs> there's only so many games you can buy a month, like, continually before you're going to hit a point where there's nothing new to buy yet. You know, that kind of way. So, um, I have one game on pre-order, which is Botoku. Um, that's come up a few times here in the comments, but also I've seen it out and about. Um, I'd really love to give that a try. Um, but beyond that, there's two games I bought. One good, one bad. So, where will we start with? We'll start with the negative first. So this game arrived at my local game shop. Good uh, happy go lucky if you want to order board games in Ireland, you might want to check them out. They've got some really good deals. And no, I'm not sponsored. I just like helping out my local gaming shop. Um, and so um, this game appeared. So this is Fjords from Grail Games um, with art by Beth Sobel. Um, and the name sounded really familiar the minute I heard it. I was like, I know this from somewhere. And sure enough, it had been a Kickstarter game. So I was like, okay, that's it. And of course, then the Beth Sobel connection. She does beautiful art. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And I looked it up online and it said it was a, a tile placement game where you were kind of building out a map and then placing people on it. And I was like, that can't be so bad, can it? So... There's that. Um, and how it plays is pretty much as described, which is there is a first phase in which you have terrain tiles um, and you draw one randomly at the start of the turn and you place it out on the board to kind of create land masses. Um, and you and your opponent do this until everything is built. Um, what you also do in this phase is that you have a number of kind of, um, oh, not yurts, what's the word I want? I'll think of it. Tents. I'll call them tents. Are you set settlements? And you want to place these out on the board um, in strategic locations because in the second phase you can place people out on the board um, but they can only be placed next to um, one of these tents or um, someone another person from your civilization um, so you're trying to connect all these things together by having built it up kind of in the first round to get as many people on the board as possible so that you can win um, the cool part here, I suppose, if you're into meanness, is that you can do a lot of blocking off of other players, um, preventing them from connecting up their chains and earning lots of points. It's kind of mean like that. Um, but yeah, so that, that's kind of the idea to it. Um, my real issue with this is actually the first phase, these terrain tiles, um, because they were very, very specific. Um, it was often hard to find places that they would actually fit um, on the board um, where the terrain types would match so you could place things. So much so that I felt like I didn't really have any choice in where pieces were being placed. Um, oftentimes I would draw something and it could only go in one location that was out on the board or maybe two. Um, and this wasn't just for me, this was also for my opponent. And it just felt like, you know, why why, why am I here? I'm not, because it, because being able to build 
um, kind of the land masses in your own way to your own benefit seemed to be a really big part of the game to me and I wasn't able to do any of that I was just placing things because I had to um, and there was only so many places I suppose that they could go so that was a bit disappointing for me um, but overall this game reminds me a lot of Blue Lagoon if any of you have played that where there is a first phase where you place all these things out and in the second phase you're going to populate the map again to try and get more points. They're really, really similar. Um, the art thing um, was a bit disappointing as well because, okay, the tiles that you use, yeah, they're, they're pretty nice. They're like little map things. But the only other piece of art in the game is on the drawstring bag you get for the tiles. And while that's nice, there wasn't a ton of art in here either. I would like to have seen a little bit more. Um, but yeah, overall, not particularly impressed with this one, but I can see why people might. Um, I've heard it's a classic. This is an older game, kind of redone. Um, but yeah, just, just oh, no, just it didn't, it didn't um, ring any bells for me, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I can see why people might like this. I just, yeah, not, not me. So um, yeah, so that was Fjords. Um, right, so this is kind of, I was going to say the only real purchase of the month, but that's not true because there is another, but you know when you order something or pre-order something a long time ago and you wait for it to show up, you kind of forget about it sometimes and that's what happened with Bullet Star. Woo woo, so it's kind of up over my head there. Um, right, let's talk about Bullet first, shall we? Um, I've spoken about this one before. Um, so Bullet Heart is the, the first game that came out and this is from Level 99 Games. They were kind of known for making really over the top, ridiculous um, kind of games. And I'm a really big fan, actually. I, I just, I, I love their kind of design aesthetic and their style for games. I have a number of their, their titles. Um, and so Bullet is the one that um, almost got away because it was on Kickstarter. Um, and it, and I don't know if I, I didn't read into it too fully, but I, I, for some reason, I assumed it was a fighting game. Um, you know, one where you're one V one or whatever with some cool characters because a number of their other releases have been like that. Um, and I just, I assumed this, um, but a friend of ours backed this, backed it on Kickstarter. And when he told us a bit more about it, I was like, oh no, um, I should have gotten a hold of this. Um, and so what Bullets, uh, <laughs> Heart Star, Heart is actually about is it's an arcade game where you're playing as a character and you're shooting bullets and trying not to get shot by other people's bullets. And how this works is that you have a grid in front of you that's split into different colors and you will draw bullets out of your bag. These are like little discs and they'll have a number and a color and you have to fill them down in the rows that are on your board. And you need to clear these off because if they get to the bottom, they're gonna shoot you. And to do that, you match patterns. So each character has their own deck of patterns. So it'll be like, you know, if you can place the bullets in this particular way, um, you'll be able to blow them up and get rid of them from your board. And you send them to your opponent. Um, there's a couple of different modes with this game. So normally you, you play in three minute timers. It actually has a soundtrack to go with it, which is really stressful, but also really fun. There's a co-op mode where you can fight a boss together. Um, and there's a solo mode that's actually quite pleasant where you also fight the boss. Um, e even I have tried that. Um, so yeah, it's got the feel of like, I don't know if you've ever played Poyo Pop, um, something like that where you're clearing things and sending stuff to your opponent. Um, it's got a really cool set of characters, each of which play very differently and do very different things, which are really appreciated in the game. Um, and I'm a big fan of this. Um, I think if anybody have, if you've played any of those gem matching games, you're on board with something like this. It really is this just taken to another level. Um, so yeah, I'm a big fan. So then when the next kind of standalone version came out, I made sure to be on board this time. Um, and so this is bullet star <laughs> um so i haven't played it just yet um but what it seems to have more of is more cool characters and more kind of ways to interact with the game that's basically what it is more choices um and so i'm really looking forward to that <laughs> um bullet is such a, a fun game and then everyone i introduce it to gets it um, because because you have played these kind of games before, but it's also really mind numbing trying to like you know do things in a hurry um, and trying to sort out all the patterns. Now you can play it without the timer as long as everyone plays it without the timer. That's possible. Um, so you don't always have.
have to feel that stress but I think it's a very satisfying game to play and I'm a big fan of it um so yeah hence I have the expansion I'll report back more about what I think about the expansion once I've played it is it an expansion is it standalone I don't really know it's the next part in the series um so I'll let you know about that one do we have any fans of um bullet out in the audience let me know and let me know who's your favorite character to play I think I really like what's her name I'm gonna call her Ada Lead. I hope that's her name she's the musical one quite a fan of her there's a couple others as well I feel like I need to play this more to really know the characters really well and get familiar with their decks but I do feel like that about a lot of the level 99 games that they really <laughs> reward repeat plays so yeah so that's um everything I bought this month it's tiny I know I know I'm holding out hope for you know new releases coming out soon um let me know what you've picked up this month if anything um I want to hear all about that and then we'll talk about what's been hitting your table when we talk about what's been hitting my table okay so games I've been playing this month um I think I'm gradually getting back into the swing of things I just I couldn't quite look at board games for a little bit I think I really burnt myself out but I'm slowly but surely making my way back into the fold um which is nice um so the first thing I need to talk to you about is a game that I acquired last month and I hadn't told you anything about yet and so I finally got around to playing back at Hong Kong from Edgar Spiele um and this is a game i'd heard a lot about because it's from a well-known designer um alexander fister who's made all sorts of games <laughs> like great western trail and um, broom service and the game that shall not be named um and so you know well normally the theme of his games don't overly appeal to me um this one kind of came and went with a flash and a bang so yeah, Blackout Hong Kong came out and people were excited and then people complained about it. I think it was to do with the, the graphic design about how the board looked. I think it was entirely black. If you look it up, look it up on BGG, it seems like the board was just black and you just placed cubes out on it. And I could understand being disappointed by that, but I heard rumours that the gameplay actually was good, even if it didn't look brilliant. And I'm like, I'm okay with those kind of odds. I'm mostly about gameplay, I think, um, more than anything else. Of course, having a good looking game helps, but not all of them have to be, right? I, I you know, I want to have fun. So this came up in my local store for a fairly reasonable price because no one seems to want to buy it. So now it seemed like a great time to try it out. And what Blackout Hong Kong is actually about is unsurprisingly, there's been a blackout. Ah! And what you are is you are in control um, of kind of different sectors of the city and you're trying to bring zones kind of under your under your control so that, you know, things are going kind of back to normal. Um, and how this actually works is it's an area control game. So you're going to want to put cubes out on the map to designate you've kind of brought this area back to order. Um, but it's also a hand management game and your hand are a variety of different workers you have that can do different things um, to help you, you know, yeah, basically, I'm going to use the word control a lot, actually. Um, bring things back to order is the best I can do. Um, so, yeah, so this feels a little bit almost like a, a mix of power grid and something else because the, the board looks like power grid. You leave out little cubes and, and once you corner basically a particular part of the map, you put down a house. Um, to say you've completely like um, fixed this place. Um, how the turn works I think is really interesting. So you get to place down three cards from your hand. They'll be in different colours and things like that and they can give you different cubes. Um, and you'll need these cubes to do various things on your board. I know right it sounds really bad. Um, the fun part about this is that once you have four or more cards in a pile so like you'll lay them out each round so this is card one two three um and then you the next round you'll go card one two and three are here um and then at one point when it becomes too big the pile will come back to your hand um and i love the fact that you decided your discard piles so you were like i'll put this card down now because i want it back in my hand in a minute because this is the big pile and i'll return that back and i thought that was really really smart um, there's lots of smart things going on in this game. It's very procedural. There's a whole number of steps you go through um, on a turn, which allows you like to buy other cards um, and things like that. And how you kind of get resources is weird because it's to do with a, um, 
a wheel or a roundel um, and basically kind of it, it's random what color things will activate in a round so if you want to get you know yellow yellow uh, yellow items you may not be able to get them on the turn you want them because that hasn't been rolled um, and that seems to be kind of the only really random element in it um, I had a lot of fun with it. Maybe I just had low expectations, but I thought it was well designed and interesting. And I do, in fact, want to play it again. Play it again soon while I remember how to play. It, it actually wasn't even that complicated once you got going. Um, so, yeah, I, I quite like this. <laughs> I, yeah, I definitely want to do it again. And I won on my first try, so that's always positive. But it was kind of cool connecting the zones and trying to get the right colours for the right things. Like, it's definitely... One of those pusher games you know this becomes this and this becomes this um but the thing with your hand was very very cool as well um i really liked how that worked um yeah this is quite a dynamic game i liked it a bit so um let me know if you have played it what you think of it have you seen it in a shop languishing for cheap maybe now's the time to try and pick it up so second on the list um i suppose i should ask you a question first and that is how do you feel about me talking about games that are either out of print or kind of difficult to obtain um because this is going to be the second time recently enough that i'll talk about a game that i don't think is straight away available in your local store um and that happened in my would you rather video if you haven't checked that maybe go check it out with a pleasant journey to nico um it's a game i i really like but it apparently is entirely unobtainable um and i feel really sorry that i talked about something that you know you might have got excited about and weren't able to go and get um so i don't know where you guys sit on this um please let me know um what you think is it okay for me to talk about games that might be difficult to obtain because the second game I want to talk about today is also, I believe, out of print. Um, although I think it is kind of readily, readily available. And this is Yokohama. And it was from Tasty Minstrel Games. One of my favourite board game publishers who went under in the last year or so. So I have a number of titles from them. I talked about Scoville before. That's also from them. And that's difficult to get. And I... Uh, it sucks. These are great games. I, I, I was hoping someone else maybe might pick them up and publish it so people could access it. But I wonder now, are these games going to be, you know, lost to time and just become really expensive? Um, I hope not. Gosh, I don't know how, I don't know how this works, but um, let me know how you feel about it. I'm not sure how I feel about it myself. I don't, I don't want to oh, see, I don't know. I feel like I'm not here to sell you things. That's not my job. I'm just here to tell you about things I like. So I don't feel like I'm telling you to go buy this now and it's not available. I hope not. Yeah, let me let me know your thoughts. I'm going to talk about Yokohama anyway, because it deserves talking about, which is normally what this section is about. Um, honorary games of the month and all that. So yeah, Yokohama is a game about imports and exports. Ooh, it's very exciting. Um, clearly it's set in Japan, with just from the, the title alone, Yokohama. Um, and what this game is about is gathering items that you other countries want and giving them to them for export so you can have money and kind of yeah mostly mostly money and victory points whatever we're calling those in these days um so you, what's cool about yokohama is how quick your turn is and yeah like you've limited choices but they all feel interesting so how it works is that there is a board and it's made up of places you can go to it's a modular board so it can change around um and so some places will produce items so you know you can get tea leaves and silk and stuff like that um other places will be like buildings which allow you to maybe get money from your bank um allow you to upgrade your little you've little buildings little houses and stuff like that as well um some will allow you to go and basically get quests or get kind of import kind of export things that you might want to do and some of them are tracks that might just give you fame or make you cool like the, the church track um and things like that but what happens on your turn is at the start of your turn you ha can either place three cubes out on the board in different locations or you can place two cubes in the same location and then you have a pawn and they're allowed to move as far as they want as long as you have those little cubes in those zones and when you go to the zone you get to perform what action is in it and the strength of that action is dependent upon how many cubes you have in that zone or maybe little houses basically how many things of your color are there and so that's really what the game is about is setting yourself up to have the right amount of stuff so when you get there you can do a cool action 
yeah, that, that's, literally, that's literally it. There's a couple of other small things that can happen, um, but nothing nothing so major as that. Um, but like, yeah, that, that that's Yokohama. Um, I love that movement system. I think, it, like, I don't know why, it's such a simple thing, but it lends so much to the game because you do have to plan. Um, and also, of course, you're running around with, with other players who can block off certain places for you or make it difficult for you to pass through particular areas. Um, so yeah, it's a simple thing. The turns are quick. Um, the game, I don't think, takes super long. Um, and I played this two players last week, and we hadn't played Yokohama in about two years, which was embarrassing. But we remembered it relatively fast, and I really enjoyed my game of it. I was like, we should have this out more often. And then game night came around and my husband was like, you guys have to try Yokohama. So for the first time ever, I got to play it with four people. The board is much bigger at four than it is at two. Um, it was definitely more difficult to kind of negotiate where everyone else was going or where you might end up. Um, and the game definitely lasted a bit longer, but it was still just as good. It was nice seeing it kind of stretch its legs a little bit. So um, yeah, that's Yokohama. I'm, I want to play. I want to play it again. It was really, really, really good. Um, and I knew there was a reason it had survived kind of all of the, the, the board game culls that go on around here, you know, all the different kind of clearings out. Yokohama has been a firm favourite. So I don't know if you've played it. Um, there is a dual, a two player only version that I would love to get my hands on someday. I wonder what that would be like. And apparently there's a roll and write version as well, but it seems to be quite expensive. So I don't know if you're interested in any of that stuff. So that is Yokohama. And last but not least, let's give a little shout out to Cascadia um, from Flat Out Games, which recently won a Spiel des Jahres. Hey! Um, and the reason I'm here to talk to you about Cascadia today is because, as you may have heard in the first section, I play Fjords, which was a game about connecting terrain types. And I was like, gosh, I have a better game for connecting terrain types, and it's Cascadia. So um, I decided to pull it pull it out and have a go, um, you know, after being left wanting by fjords. Um, and Cascadia does indeed allow you to connect your tiles lots of different ways. But what it is about is in Cascadia, you are building kind of habitats um, for animals. And so you will be, on your turn, you will be taking a tile that you're going to match all of the different terrain types on your board. And you can also place an animal on it, an animal token. And you, you get these um, when you take your terrain type, but they're random which ones you get. So you mightn't always get what you want. Um, and so you eventually, you add your tokens, your animal tokens down onto the board. But it's not that simple because the animals have to be in particular like configurations. They live in particular ways. And so it's up to you to follow them to get victory points. This is where I always fall down in the game. I put out a tweet about Cascadia saying it makes me feel stupid, and it does. <laughs> I'm not even lying, um, because it, Cascadia is not a difficult game by any stretch of the imagination. It's very spatial, um, and I like how you grow out kind of your different sectors and things. You also want to connect the same um, type of kind of terrain together to, for bonuses later in the game so you'll want like a big all your river stuff together or all your mountain stuff together but whatever happens my brain just falls apart when I look at the shapes or the patterns I'm supposed to build for the animals I don't think I've ever played a game of this where I have correctly identified what all of the shapes were supposed to be um, like last time I, sc I screwed up both the salmons and the bears um, and usually, yeah, usually I'll screw up a couple. Usually it's the birds. The bird ones usually are like long distance. Like you want a bird connected to a bird connected to a bird. And I just, I don't know, my brain, my brain, my brain just gives up. Um, but I really enjoy Cascadia. Um, I think it's, I think it's a really lovely game. Um, and it's nice and kind of easy going. I, I think maybe I just need to make like an extra copy of all of like the animal cards and sit them in front of me so I can't mess it up. I don't know what happens. Does anyone else have an issue with stuff like this? I just, I don't do spatial things very well at the best of times. So I'm like, it looks like it's here and here and then I'll build it. And I'm like, that's not the same as what the card said at all. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I'm not very good at this, but um, I really do rather enjoy it. And I had fun connecting all my terrain and collecting on the animals. I do think I just focus on making animals, not where they end up. I'm just in such a hurry to get all the foxes out in the board. I kind of can't help myself. So if you tried Cascadia, seems like a great time to give it a go now that it's an award-winning title. Um, but it's fun um, and it's quick as well. So there's always that. So I can heartily recommend. 
So that's kind of a, a taste of everything I've been playing this month. I'm dying to hear what's been hitting your table. Um, of course, hearing your favourites. Maybe you're not so favourite, as long as you're nice. Um, but yeah, let's see what you've been up to. And I'm going to move on to the final section, which is the kind of chit-chatty bit. Um, and we'll see what I've got to talk about. Maybe, maybe some movies. People were liking movies last time. All right, so first things first, there's been another Would You Rather video put out. I hope people um, like it or continue to like it. I, I don't know. I find it mildly entertaining. I love having people reply in the comments telling me I made the right choices. It's fantastic. Um, so I'm going to try and make another one of those, possibly right after this. So um, if you're enjoying them, let me know. That's great. Um, and then I'll have to figure out what happens when the games start overlapping. Should I still keep keep them distinct should they always be three new games is it okay if it was one we already heard about overlapped with other ones i haven't had it happen yet but i assume eventually it'll have to happen you know random is random um and the other good news is it looks like i'm like chugging along here um with the channel i was i was planning on finishing up the last two videos and taking a really big break i was really 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 tired um and then a couple a company or two got in touch with me about you know working on some of their kickstarter games and i kind of i don't know that kind of reinvigorated me a little bit so that was really nice so it looks like i have more things coming so that means i'll keep be keeping making things um which i guess is good i don't feel too oppressed by it i've kept it all simple um but yeah um <laughs> i guess that's good yeah, I guess that's good. It's very hard to fall out of love with something that you really, really loved. Um, you know what I mean? It's very hard to be like, I could be playing board games right now, but I'm just so tired. Like, yeah, I, yeah, depression's really, really fun and anxiety is even funner. Um, but this is, you know, this is what I'm working with. So I'm doing my best to keep kind of everything afloat as much as possible. So yeah, so the board game stuff kind of settling in okay. It wasn't too bad actually sitting back in today. It's been a little while since I had to film everything. I have kind of stuff planned out. So um, yeah, not, not entirely crazy. So yeah, more stuff coming. Um, I'll do my best to keep going. Um, and thank you all for watching and being here with me. It's a bit of a, a crazy journey. Um, so right, so what else have been up to this month? Um, outdoorsing. I'm going to continue with the outdoorsing trend. Not sure when I became an outdoorsy person, but it seems to kind of vaguely have happened. Um, so I'd like the second half of my holidays, which involved me going on a boat to an island. I went to Shirkin Island and had a wander around there. Um, I went to the really cool Baltimore Beacon. I finally, I managed to climb my way up to that. I'm very proud of myself. Yeah, for other people, this isn't much of a climb. This is just me. Um, where else to go? Just lots of kind of exploring around the coast and finding so many random beaches down random dirt roads. Um, I was convinced we'd almost bottomed out the car many a time, but um, not yet. And I'm still planning to go on a trip to a lighthouse. So we'll see how that goes yet. Um, this has been helped by the fact I got a new lens for my camera and it's stupid expensive, but super sexy good. Um, I've just been doing so much outdoorsy stuff and I was like, I just need a little bit of an upgrade from the, you know, the, the lens that comes with the camera. So um, I sold some board games and all of my birthday and Christmas future presents. Um, so I was able to get something really shiny and it takes some really lovely photos. It makes me very anxious with it though, because I'm like, this is so much money and I'm carrying it around. Um, but yeah, I have lots of photo stuff these days and hopefully more of that to come as well. So yeah, that's been that's that's been kind of good, and I'm still been going to the cinema. Hooray! I'm gonna get to the cinema at least one day a week. Although I'm behind this week, there was two releases last Friday, and I was not ready. So this week, well, we'll hopefully bring some more trips. So I had to go check my phone, but here's a quick tour de force of some of the movies I've seen this month, and you can have a whole sentence about them if you're interested i promise there'll be no spoilers i'm not one of those people so i started off with bullet train so this has got brad pitt on a bullet train as some kind of kind of not quite assassin but like a retrieval person then all hilarity ensues um it's really colorful bright kind of over the top violence i absolutely loved it and it's very clever as well everything fits together real nice so i was very impressed with bullet train um, next up I watched the DC League of Super Pets, which was horribly generic, but then again, what was I expecting? Um, yeah, I just, it didn't kind of blow me away. Um, I, I feel like more maybe could have been done with it. 
Um, do think this, the villain in it, however, is pretty fantastic. So that was quite fun. Um, right, what's next? Um, I watched a movie called Joyride. Um, Joyride, do you really sound it so Irish? Joyride. Nope, still sound Irishy. Um, and I think this is an Irish made film. And it's really unusual because I wasn't sure much about it. But the story is about a, a young fella, young fella, who robs a car when he's trying to get away from his parents. Um, but there is a, a lady and a newborn baby inside the car. Um, and it's kind of a heartwarming story. Um, and it is really touching, actually. It's really well done. Probably a little bit too touchy-feely for my taste. But um, yeah, it was, it was a very unusual and kind of cool film and very funny as well. So um, that was kind of well done. That was Joyride. Um, then I finally got to go and see Nope. So I heard Nope was a horror film, or at least the director of Nope had made horror films. So I wasn't sure whether I was going to go see this on my own in the cinema in the dark. I thought it might be a bit much. But apparently there's a chart online where you can find out just how scary something is. And this was compared to like Jaws in terms of scary. And I was like, I think I, think I could do a Jaws. So I went to see Nope. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It's a little drawn out, like it takes a while to get there, but I kind of see what they did. And it's kind of unusual and cool, not horry really at all. Not and not even jump scary either. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. I liked the characters and I liked the kind of the way the, the movie kind of evolves. So yeah, I actually I really quite like that. Um, I also got to go see the Dragon Ball Super movie. <laughs> Um, I haven't watched Dragon Ball since I was a, probably too old to be watching Dragon Ball. No, teenager. And I was afraid I wouldn't know any of the characters in this movie. But I did. I knew pretty much everybody. It was like a time capsule of a movie. Um, I, I didn't know it was in Japanese. So I was like, oh, I'm reading a lot of subtitles. There was only me and one other guy there in the cinema. And it was hilarious because we were both laughing at the same jokes out loud. So we, I think kind of, I think we kind of had a good time, you know, enjoying it together but separately. So that was pretty fun, actually. That was not bad. I also watched a movie called Fisherman's Friend: One for All. I shouldn't. I really should look more into these movies before I go and see them because this movie was a sequel, and I did not know there had been a previous movie. But it's about a group of fishermen who are in a band. And the trials and tribulations of trying to fit into modern day like record label making. I don't know, I was a bit horrified at parts of this where they're trying to give them sensitivity training so that they won't harass women. Um, and it's all done in this kind of jokey manner. And I was like, oh, that's a bit cringe. It gets a little bit better over time because, um, you know, it kind of it settles down a little bit. But a lot of it I found just a bit cringy. It does star um, Imelda May. If anyone's familiar with her, she's a famous Irish musician um, and she's super cool. And I knew her the minute I saw her on screen. I was like, that's Imelda. Um, so she did good. So, yeah, it wasn't wasn't terrible. It just wasn't my thing. And that's where my thread ends. Is it? It is. That was five days ago. So I have two more movies to get to see this week. I guess there'll be a next month's one. Welcome to Good Old Games Does Movies. <laughs> have you seen any of these? Have you enjoyed them? Would you like to go see any? Do people go to the cinema a lot anymore? Or, or do you wait for it to kind of come out and watch it at home? I'm um, like, I'm going to the cinema simply because it's really, really cheap. Um, like disgustingly cheap but also because it's a good reason to leave the house at least one day a week so um, I'm going for my mental health really more than anything else so I'm watching all sorts of stuff I would never have watched normally like a lot of these movies I, I would never have seen in real life so yeah that's what's going on there let me know what you've been seeing um yeah so yeah that that is exactly where everything is at more games more movies more outdoorsing um and i'll be back soon with some more episodes of things yeah so um i wish you all well i hope you had a good month and that this month is all set up for success um and god it's september youch okay get away it, it'll be time to put up the halloween decorations any day now <laughs> all right so um, i'll talk to you again in the future take care everybody make sure to like subscribe I don't know, tell a friend, send a carrier pigeon, that kind of stuff. Um, that'd be great. And I'll see you soon for a proper video. All right, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.